Polio might not have been seen in Britain since the 1980s, but despite worldwide efforts, the potentially fatal disease is still endemic in three countries. I caught up with the Director of Immunisation at the Department of Health, Professor David Salisbury, as he visited St John's College in Cambridge to speak about the global effort to eradicate the disease. The UK hasn't had any polio cases since 1982, so longer than I have been alive. So forgive me if I don't fully know. But how does polio spread, for starters, and why is it such a dangerous disease? Well, it spreads from person to person, and the the main route of transmission, and particularly in in underdeveloped environments, is through faecal oral spread. So, it goes out in people's feces where water isn't properly cleaned and is where there are open sewers. Then it, it goes from person to person, and for many many people, it's a very mild illness. They don't even know they've had. However, for some people, it's a terrible illness because they get paralysed. And you can die from polio if it affects the muscles that control breathing, and that's what it used to be like. And even as a child, I remember when swimming pools were closed in the summer because that's where people congregated. And polio was a very feared disease in this country until we had vaccination, and then polio just stopped. That's not the case everywhere in the world, though. So you talk there about in some parts of the world it not being fully eradicated. India has just celebrated three years without any cases. Where in the world is it still a problem? Well, India is just a wonderful success story. The government of India put in huge resources into what are very, very difficult circumstances in some parts of India, and they've done a wonderful job. We're left really with three endemic countries. Endemic means that the disease is still there, and we just haven't been able to break the chains of transmission. And those three are Nigeria, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. So, if some countries like India are able to clean up their act, as it were, what are the barriers to eradication in other countries where it is still endemic, like Afghanistan and Pakistan? Well, sadly, the problem in Pakistan, in particular, has been a difficulty of access into communities where there is active resistance to polio workers, and tragically, polio workers have been shot trying to do their job. In parts of Pakistan, particularly up in the northwest of the country, where there has been outright hostility towards the polio eradication campaign, from what is really a political basis. I mean, India, in its progress towards eradication, they had huge financial support, political will, something like 2.3 million people vaccinating children across the country. In places like Pakistan and Afghanistan, where there is this this trust deficit about what the World Health Organization is doing in certain areas, this idea that the Taliban talk about this conspiracy about what they might be up to, are we able to overcome that, or do we just need to accept because the will isn't there at the moment, that's not something that we can do at the moment? It is extraordinarily difficult. Those problems exist, and the fact that it is dangerous for people to go and try to vaccinate children in parts of Pakistan, in particular. Certainly makes optimism hard in the short term. However, there are ways and means in which achievements can be made, and progressively improving the program in the parts of Pakistan where you have got access will squeeze the virus into smaller and smaller areas. That when people are allowed in, will be much easier to deal with. So there are two different parts to this. The first is getting. The program into a really robust state in the places where there is access, and being ready when the political circumstances change, so that one can get better access into, particularly Waziristan and parts of the federally administered territorial areas of Pakistan. Once polio can be stopped there, prospects for Afghanistan become very much better. Why is it so important for us to continue with this eradication program in Pakistan and Afghanistan when it is so dangerous? Is it the fear of it spreading to other areas where we've cleared polio from those areas? Is it affecting us here in the West? What's going on there? Well, there is very good experience that where polio continues to spread within a country, it will spread to other places too, and we know that from the experience in Nigeria, where the virus has come out of Nigeria on a number of occasions, infecting neighbouring countries and then infecting distant countries, and so we can tell that a virus, for example, came out of Pakistan, went into Egypt, spread from Egypt into Israel. We can trace the spread of these viruses, and we can trace their lineage. 
so we know where they've come from. So the risk will always be there for all of us. We can have very good immunization programs in our own countries, but that doesn't mean that every single child in every community is vaccinated. And that's why polio remains a risk until the virus has gone from everywhere in the world. There was this aim a while ago now to eradicate polio by the year 2000. Now, obviously, that hasn't been met. If we were to reset that goal today, is it possible at this point? And when would we estimate that we would be able to overcome all these multitude of hurdles that we've heard about? I think that's very difficult to answer because when the goal was set back in 1988, 2000 seemed fairly distant and it was relatively easy to get the quick gains. And I think in a way there may have been a mistake made in that we didn't do the worst first. If they got the early gains from doing some of the easiest, it would be seen as as encouragement for those where it was going to be more difficult. So I think it was just a matter of attitude that was prevalent at the time. If we started again now, well, we'd have to deal with the problems that still exist now. So we would have to find ways of getting round the conflict circumstances, the very difficult access uh, situations. Um, Would it take us as long? Probably not, because we would hopefully have learned many of the lessons. So our failure to treat the worst first may have led to the current problems we have trying to eradicate polio. But by strengthening our current vaccination programmes, there is hope for when the political situation improves.